Hi, and welcome back to Programming with Pax. In today's video, we're going to go over the different measurement units that are available in CSS and when you'd use them. We'll cover pixels, M, rem, percentages, VH, VW, all of them. <laughs> Let's get started. All right, so with CSS units, we have two different types. The first are absolute units. So with absolute units such as pixels, the defined size that you give it is going to always remain the same. Now that one pixel isn't actually one pixel. It used to be, but as monitors have become widescreens and retina displays, that one pixel didn't really work anymore. Essentially, it now comes down to one inch on your monitor contains 96 pixels. So because it's a fixed amount, it's an absolute unit. The second type of units are relative units. So M, REM, percentage, VW, and VH are the most common ones that you'll use. With relative units, this is where things get interesting. They will scale depending on how you use them in your HTML. There are other absolute and relative units other than the ones listed here, but these are the most common and the ones that you absolutely need to know. Let's dig into some code and see some examples. I've gone ahead and made a quick project here with a parent container in the body. And in the styles, we have the parent container here, which is this green rectangle. It has a fixed width of 1000 pixels. So the width here is 1000 and a minimum height of just 100 pixels so that it actually appears on the screen. And we have this border, of course. And this right here basically says that any divs within the parent container will then have this orange background color and a little bit of padding and margin as well. Let's start by looking at pixels. So I'm gonna add a div here with a class of pixels. And on the CSS side, I will add the pixel class with a width of 400. And when I save, you can see that there's this orange bar here and it gets to roughly 40% of this 1000 pixel container. If I were to change the width to 800, then it scales up to 800 pixels. So as we can see, they are a set unit and they do not scale. So 400 pixels will always be 400 pixels, simple. Next, let's look at M's and REM's. So I'm just gonna add some styling here. So one REM and one M. Let's first look at REM's. So the R in REM stands for root because it uses the root elements font size. This is often done in the HTML selector. So by default, without doing anything, it's already set to 16 pixels. But if we set it here, of course, to another 16 pixels, and I save, the size of the bar here is not gonna change at all. And I'm just gonna open up the Chrome inspect just so we can see things a little clearer. We can see here that the width is 16. And if I were to change this font size here to let's say 30, and I save, now we can see that the width of the bar has increased and uh, I can set it at 60 and it's gonna be now 60 in width, as you can see right here. Now setting the font size like this in the HTML selector is kind of bad practice because by doing so, you're going to stop anybody from being able to manually change it themselves on their browser. But for demonstrative purposes, this is how REMs work. So I'm gonna comment that out, I'm gonna save, and we are back to a 16 pixel width. Now, because this is already set to 16 by default, I don't need to change anything here. If I change this one rem to two rems, then it's going to be 16 times two, so 32 in width now. And you can see here, 32 pixels. Ms, on the other hand, do not take the font size of the root element, but instead they take the font size of the element that they're used within. So if I set the font size on this container, to 30 pixels and save, you can see that the element has a width of 30 pixels. There is a misconception that M units are relative to the font size of the parent element, but that isn't true. The parent container can affect the M values, but when that happens, it is because of inheritance. So we can see that here, if I add a font size of 60 on the parent container and save, nothing changes for the width of this element. The 30 is still gonna be applied and we can see that in the width. So it's still, it's still 30 here. 
So now you may be asking why use M's and REMs instead of pixels. In many cases, I do use pixels. However, REMs allow things to scale for the entire page. This can be particularly useful for accessibility, where someone with a visual impairment can change the root font size on their browser, which would affect the value up here, and the site will scale accordingly. With M's, it allows sizing values to be determined by a font size other than what's declared on the HTML selector, allowing for scalability on a more granular level. For example, you might want to set the padding and margin on a navbar menu to use M values so that if the menu's font size changes, the spacing around the menu items will scale proportionately and independently of the rest of the layout. The same idea for buttons. So you want the padding within the button to scale with the font size of the button so that things stay in proportion. All right, so I'm gonna turn this back down to one rem so that it just kind of shows what's going on. And the M is gonna stay at one for 30 pixels. So you can see here on the left, the relative scale that's happening. Next, let's look at percentages, VW and VH. So there's the HTML for it, and here's the styling. So percentage 100, and for VW, it is a width of 100 VW. So with percentage, it's based on the parent container. So again, this green box. So if an element is set to 50%, it's going to take up 50% of the width of the parent container. Now, VW stands for viewport width, and VH is for viewport height. The viewport is the browser window, not including the console here. So unlike percentage, 100 VW will always be the entire width of the browser window, and 100% VH will always be the entire height of the browser window. So you can see here, if I grab the browser window and start pulling it, this bar is gonna to continue to stay full width of my screen. So VW could be really useful for when you want something to take up your entire screen no matter what. I'll use this often for sections to make sure that the color, the background color of the section stays the entire width of the screen. And now I just wanna quickly show you VH. So if I uncomment this and uncomment the styling and save, you can see here that there's this massive thing which has the height of my screen. All right, so just to recap, we have a thousand pixel width container here, which is the green rectangle. So with pixels, it's an absolute unit. So 400 pixels will always be 400. With rem, it takes it off of the root element. So whatever is set in the HTML here. So by default, that's 16 pixels, which is why this is 16 in width. With M's, it has to do with the font size that is currently set on the container. So here we have a font size of 30 pixels. So a width of one M will be equal to 30 pixels. And that's why it's almost double the size of the rem. With percentages, it's based on the parent container. So a width of 50% will be equal to 50% or 500 pixels of this 1000 pixel green container. With VW and VH, the VW is going to be based on the viewport's width. So 100 VW width is always going to be the full width of your screen. And for VH, it's going to take up 100% of your screen. All right, so that is CSS measurement units in a nutshell. If you have any questions at all, just leave them in the comments down below and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. If you enjoyed this video, I'm releasing a whole series right now on these fundamental CSS topics that can sometimes be a little trickier, but you absolutely have to understand them. So be sure to subscribe. With that out of the way, thank you very much for your time. I hope you're having a great day and I'll see you in the next one.